This is Michael Woodward, and this is Season 2, Episode 22 of the Jumble Think Podcast. T-10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. We explore the ideas and dreams behind some of the leading entrepreneurs from around the world. Along the way, we will give you some tips and ideas of how you can chase your own big ideas and dreams and change the world around you. Our guest on today's episode is Paul Gustafson. More about Paul in a moment. Our guest on Thursday's episode is Kerry Burkett. He is the founder of Red Bird Visions, and he's also in the past been a writer and editor for DC Comics and a freelance writer for Marvel Comics. He's also a beloved host with NPR in the Harrisburg region. Our episode with Terry Burkett is incredibly powerful, so you want to make sure to check out that episode this Thursday. Before we jump into today's episode, I want to take a moment to remind you, wherever you're listening, Apple Podcast, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, wherever you listen to this podcast, make sure you click that subscribe button. Now let's jump into today's episode with Paul Gustafson. <laughs> Hey there, welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. My name is Michael Woodward. I am your host and so excited that you've joined us for today's episode. Before we jump into our interview with Paul, I want to let you know about something free and cool we have going on over at jumblethink.com. Swing on over to jumblethink.com slash guide. We have two free guides that are available for you. The first one is overcoming the unknown and the second one is how to know when you found your dream. Both of these guides will help you on your journey of chasing your big ideas and dreams and knowing the next steps you need to take. So make sure you swing on over to jumblethink.com slash guide and check out the free guides we have for you there. Now let's learn a little bit more about Paul Gustafson. My name is Paul Gustafson. I'm a co-founder and CTO of Simventions Incorporated, a founding member with the John Maxwell team, and author of the book Leaders Press On. Also, I'm a co-host of a bi-monthly podcast with Ken Tarr, who serves in the reserves for the U.S. Marines, called Leading the Millennials that I'm really excited about. Well, we started Simventions in 2000 with the tagline, Imagine, Create, Explore, and Discover. And our goal was then and now to develop and integrate technology for this digital world. Um, and that includes software, simulation, systems, and our main customer focus is primarily the defense industry, including the Navy, Marine Corps, Army, Air Force. And it's been a, it's been a journey where my passion for leadership has grown, really grown a lot. So I'm passionate about leadership and uh, applying it not only at Simventions, but outside of Simventions as well. You know, in college, I had a dream to launch a business. I remember it distinctly, and I, I thought, maybe one day, maybe one day. And uh, for a number of years, I just kind of let it sit. I didn't do anything with it. I didn't know how, sort of fearful. And uh, I, I ran into a couple other guys who also had a dream to start a business. And we started kicking it around. We're like, well, why not? Who says that we can't? So I think it was that connection with other folks who like-minded, who wanted to, to launch something. And we did it together, the three of us. And we launched that business. And uh, lo and behold, we went from three. Now we're... 240 employees. So it's been pretty powerful. You know, I find fulfillment, significance and purpose in helping and seeing others, other people imagine, create, explore and discover just just like our tagline. I, I love it when I can see a team member, an employee, another person really persevere, to be honest with you, and, and take something and move something forward, innovate. I love love that term innovation is overused, but it's essentially uh, the essence of uh, who I am and what I love to see other people do. And I think that's my why, that, that whole part about helping seeing others imagine, innovate, and persevere. That's my why. It inspires me. And a story that comes to mind is seeing my oldest son pursue his dream. Uh, he was born with a challenge. He, um, he, had, he has cerebral palsy, but that hasn't limited him. Uh, and uh, it's a long story, but uh, just just the turns and the pivots that he's made to be able to persevere is just amazing. You know, he had an aspiration to learn how to play guitar, and and that was a struggle, but he found a way and was amazing at it. And then he wanted to become an engineer, and uh, they they said, "Well, your math's not good enough." And he said, "Well, uh, I'll make it. <laughs> I'll find a way." And he did, and uh, he became an engineer at uh, Virginia Tech, graduated in electrical engineering and uh, continues just to inspire me. I just love to see that in other people. 
So those are some of the stories that come to mind as far as people imagining, innovating, and persevering. It matters to me. What, what I do matters to me because I feel like we're all candles, if I could use just a metaphor. I think we're all candles. We're either lit or we're not. And for a long time, I was that candle in the box, right? You know, that box in the closet with all those other unlit candles. And I call that box the box of status quo, right? That's, that's status quo. It's how we live our life. We just kind of follow what's in front of us. And it's a lot, how a lot of us live. And when I finally got out of that box, realizing there was something more to life, and I tried to get my candle lit, I just couldn't initially, just didn't know how to go forward. I talked about that dream I had for a business and we didn't do anything for the longest time. But when you get near the proximity of other folks who have their candle lit, who are living with purpose, then you can get your candle lit. And that's what I experienced. So it wasn't until I got into the proximity of others who really could encourage me to imagine and pursue what life had to offer that I got that candle lit. And I heard this quote, and, I, and it's allegedly from Thomas Jefferson, and I believe it's true, but I love it. And he said that a candle can never lose its flame when it lights another. And I think that's so powerful because that's what I experienced. And here's the cool thing. When we think, you know, uh, when we're afraid to light somebody else's candle, we're afraid because maybe our candle or our flame will go out. But when you tip that candle, have you ever noticed that the flame is a whole lot brighter? It doesn't go out. It just gets stronger. And uh, it's true for us, too, in, in real life. We can encourage other people, and it and inspires us back. So it's pretty powerful. And I just want to be that candle, be that vessel, the light that uh, that lights other candles. There's challenges every day in business. And uh, I think anybody who steps into business to feel like they're, they're going to be able to avoid the challenges is misguided and misdirected. So you're going to experience challenges. We experience challenges. I think for us, one of the challenges is we're in a location where it's a bedroom community. And so there's a lot of talent that leaves north because the status quo says all the, all the work is up north. And so they live in this town. We're in a you know, rural town, Fredericksburg, Virginia, south of Washington. And folks are driving an hour plus, sometimes three hours to get to where they need to go. And that's a lot of talent leaving this space. And so our challenge is to try to make them aware that, hey, look, we've got some high tech work here that you can do where we're at. And so we're trying to learn ways to be able to track that. <laughs> we're thinking about putting a billboard out there on the highway that says, you're driving, we're not, come work for us. <laughs> but, you know, we want to we want to have fun with that. I loved how Google actually, they put a, a billboard up one time that says, you're brilliant, we're hiring. We thought about using that one too. The next big goal for us in our business is to innovate even more. I, you know, I mentioned the word innovation earlier. Innovation to me is is really critical and key. Um, this is true for me personally as well, not just for our business. And innovate means coming up with solutions that make a difference for those that we serve, right? That's what an innovation really does. It's, an invention doesn't necessarily do that, but an innovation does. And the true value of technology, if you want to apply technology, most people think innovation means technology. It could doesn't necessarily limit it to just technology. But the true value of an innovation is whether or not it touches someone in a way that makes life better. And that for me is the definition of innovation. True innovation should always be about connecting people. Otherwise, it's just an invention with little to no impact. So I would say technology or innovation done right will help you or someone else persevere. I want to come back to that word. I think that's such a critical word for leadership and those that are pursuing their business and their aspirations and their dreams is perseverance. And for me personally and for our business, we want to innovate more so that we can help others persevere. We'll be right back with the interview portion of our conversation with Paul Gustafson. Do you have a big idea and dream and you don't know where to start? Or maybe some fears and obstacles have gotten in the way. Or maybe for you, you've put that dream on the shelf for one day. Well, no matter the reason, we would love to help you on your journey of taking the idea and dream and making it a reality. Swing on over to jumblethink.com and check out some of the services that we have to help you on your journey of making that big idea and dream a reality. Now, let's join our interview with Paul Gustafson. I am super excited about our guest today. Paul, thanks for being on the podcast. And 
uh, giving us some insights into what you do. Michael, great to be on. Love Jumble Think. I think this is one of the best podcasts out there. So I really enjoyed having listened to several of these now um, uh, at the time of our podcast today. And uh, I'm going to go back and listen to a bunch more. So glad to be on, glad to be a guest uh, on your uh, podcast and uh, hope to add some value today. You know, I I do research when I get into uh, for every guest we have coming on. And uh, there are so many things we can talk about today. So it's going to be an exciting time. I, right off the bat, in your um, segment one, when you're sharing your story and a little bit of your background, uh, you said something that I thought was incredibly powerful. Uh, actually, a couple of things that dovetailed on each other. And, and you talked about uh, when you were in college that you you always had this kind of burning desire to start something, a business, whatever that looked like. And it was that that thought of one day I'll start something. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that whole yeah. uh, transition from one day into I've got to stop waiting for one day. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I remember it so clearly just walking across campus. It was a sunny day. I went to Old Dominion University and yeah. um, I was thinking, okay, um, where is this going to take me? Yeah. What's my job? What, where am I going to land after this is all over? What's life in store? And, and I had worked a lot of different jobs as a temp. Okay. I don't know if you've ever heard of manpower. Oh and yeah. Temporary <laughs> service. And that was a great experience for me because I could go into different workspaces and environments and I worked for the big guys and I worked for the small little shops and I got a feel for culture. I got a feel for innovation. I got a feel for all these different things. Just, just, just doing different odd end jobs. And I remember through that experience, and then here I am as a computer engineer at Old Dominion University, thinking, what can I do? I, I want to start a business one day. Okay. Yeah. One day, right? Yeah. And so I just kind of filed that away. Yeah. And I never forgot about it, but it just never seemed like the right time. And it never, ever seems like the right time to start a business, right. to be honest with you. Yeah. And, uh, and then Microsoft announced they were coming out with this game system called the Xbox. Yeah. And I remember talking to some guys. I said, man, the Xbox is coming out. We could take our modeling and simulation stuff that we do and, and maybe make something happen in that world. Yeah. And then I said to him, I said, I've always wanted to start a business. And the other guy said, yeah, well, I've always wanted to start a business too. And I said, <laughs> well, let's do it. And we all said yeah. the same thing. Let's do it. And uh, we started off, you know, kind of 4 a.m. in the morning kind, kind of work, weekends, taking some holidays here and there and just putting stuff together, pursuing the Xbox endeavor. It didn't quite pan out the way we wanted to, but we, we did go through some hoops there. It was kind of fun interacting with Microsoft. We did some stuff for Kodak and uh, we launched this business. As soon as we got past Y2K, we're like, cool, we made it through Y2K. We're <laughs> right. safe. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's when we started. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. You just mentioned a word that I, you know, you say over and over and over again, it's very much into the, the fabric of your DNA, and that's the word innovation. But you dovetailed it with culture. Innovation and culture, uh, I think, are, are such powerful things. How do you create, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, how do you create a culture that fosters innovation? That's powerful. You know, culture, I think, is is one of those things we have to keep going back to and looking at it, because yeah. once you think you've got the culture... <laughs> then you don't. <laughs> so, and it's also true for innovation. Once you think you have the innovation um, and you're like, cool, we've got the innovation. Well, not for long. Right, so right. Uh, you've got to keep continuing to carry that through. So when we started our business, we, we had that tagline, imagine, create, explore, discover. And it so rings true for us. And really just to kind of spell that out even further, um, I want to put a um, a noun with each of those verbs, right? So if you think of imagine, create, explore, discover as verbs, yeah. what are the nouns to go with it? Well, the first part is imagine the possible. Okay. That's where it starts, right? So, yeah. you know, when we talked about that dream that I had in college to start a business and, and two other guys that did also that I met up with later, um, you have to imagine the possible. And if you can't imagine the impossible, <laughs> because <laughs> that, that just doesn't make sense. I mean, people say, well, imagine the impossible. No, no imagine the possible. The, your imagination is far superior than what you have in front of you in the real space. Yeah. You know, I, Einstein had some great quotes on that. 
Um, and I, I would start there. And then the second part, the create, is create the future. Okay. So if the future is going to happen anyhow, you might as well create it. So create it. So once you, what you imagine is, is an opportunity for you to take that, design it out, shape it out, and, and create that. And so we want to foster that within our culture. So we are tying those. We're trying to tie it together all the time. And that third piece, explore, that's really about exploring the opportunities. Yeah. All right. And opportunities, here's what's really, and we didn't, I didn't know this early on, but opportunities come in the midst of challenges. Yeah. That's yeah. when the opportunities come about. So when you're creating, all of a sudden you hit those, you know, Murphy comes in, you know, <laughs> you know, Murphy's law. And it feels like you're just not going to get there. You're struggling with something or you hit a bunch of walls and challenges. And somewhere in the midst of that challenge lies the opportunity. I think Einstein said it, in, in the midst of difficulty lies opportunity. Yeah. And it's so true. So if you can find a way through that, in fact, the great innovations, those that innovate, find those challenges and say, oh, okay, there's an opportunity here. Right. And they work through that. And then that fourth piece, discover, it's about discovering the bigger picture. Mm. So we think we have a, a picture when we imagine, but we really don't truly know what that bigger picture is until we go through all the steps. Mm -hmm. And that fourth step is so vital. So then that's where you can discover the bigger picture. Yeah. I think that's really cool. And and just kind of stepping back, you know, you mentioned about a lot of people say, imagine the impossible. Yeah. And and I think I think a lot of times what they're trying to say really is maybe imagine the unexpected or imagine the unseen or things that don't exist that could be. And I think that there's a very different approach to problems if you step back and look at it and go, well, what am I seeing that others aren't? And then what am I doing to create that? I, I think, again, I love that that path, uh, that flow that you've created, imagine and to create. And then when you talked about exploring, you were talking about challenges. And you think of so many businesses that were birthed out of the roughest seasons of whether it's economic downturns or social upheaval or both and how so many successful businesses have their foundation in those seasons of, of difficulties. And I love discover, you know, that bigger picture, yeah. that's where that dream comes in. I think it's just, uh, it's a beautiful way to look through the process of, or journey of entrepreneurship. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's so key to it. And I think a lot of folks, you know, I've been there myself where we start well, we start well with the imagine phase. Yeah. And we get to the create phase. And Seth Godin wrote a book called The Dip. And when you hit okay. the create phase, and we've experienced this in our business too. So you have this super high and you're ex lots of exuberation at the start of it. But then it kind of wanes. And you, you take this dip. And that excitement drops. And then all of a sudden, because the enthusiasm has gone, you're like, okay, <laughs> you know, I guess I'm not yeah. going to go anywhere. And a lot of people just quit at that point. Yeah. And Seth talks about just keep going. You know, you, you've hit that, that valley, but it's not over yet. Just keep yeah. working through it. And that, yeah. you know, that, I think that's something everybody experiences. So when you hit that explore part and you're like, well, this, this isn't working. <laughs> keep going <laughs> right. the the best is yet to come but you've got to go through it it almost seems like it takes being a little stubborn <laughs> in the process of innovation uh that it's the stubborn and kind of uh people who don't know that they should give up that actually see the breakthrough absolutely yeah and i think we we limit ourselves when, when we imagine too yeah yeah and i agree with that and, yeah. uh, but it's so important to start there. Yeah. yeah. And I remember the quote now, it's from uh, Jean, Jean Jacques Rousseau, and I don't really know much about him, but I found this quote, right? Google's great. You can find awesome quotes. <laughs> and I found this quote uh, years ago that I love. And he said that the world of reality has its limits. The world of imagination is boundless. Yeah. And that's the power of the imagination is that you can leverage that. So one of the best tools you've got, yeah. might as well use it. Yeah. <laughs> and then start kind of shaping out, what, okay, what can we do? What's the first step that we can do to pursue that vision? Yeah. How can someone really start that journey of seeing the unseen? 
seeing what others are missing, seeing what could be and isn't. I mean, Steve Jobs is the the pinnacle of that. I think so many of us think of him as as the person that was able to take the unseen, the unknown, the unexpected, the things that haven't been discovered or created yet. And he was able to create a roadmap that uh, changed culture, changed how we approach jobs. How, how do we um, yeah. really begin to uh, foster a lifestyle that, that uh, lets us imagine at a level where we can walk in that? Well, uh, I would say the magic word, believe it or not, is hope. Okay. I know people say hope is not a strategy. <laughs> I get that, yeah. but it's a starting point. Right. It's a starting point. Yeah. And I will, I'll never forget, you know, here I am back in college and uh, it's my last semester. Yeah. Michael, I, I'm struggling with 10,000 things that are just going on. You know, things are due in every class and test projects, coding, you know, lots of stuff I got to do. And uh, my girlfriend and I um, took a break during the middle middle of the day and grabbed a Coke. And she could tell I was just down. Yeah. And she she kind of said, hey, Paul, I've noticed, you know, you're not the same. What's going on? And I kind of opened up like a victim and I just shared everything that was happening in my world. Just how I thought I wasn't going to make it, that, that perhaps I wasn't going to finish. Mm -hmm. And then she asked one question. Yeah. She was really good about this. She asked one question. She, she said, but you still have hope, don't you? Mm -hmm. And when she, she asked that question, it was like a light bulb turned on. I, I, I reflected on it and I realized I hadn't lost hope. It was still there. I had masked it, but it was still there. And her asking that question allowed it to come out and light up the rest of the room. And I said to her, I remember, I said, yeah. Yeah, I, I do. I still have hope. Right. I still have hope. Right. And from that, I was able to push through all the challenges that I had and move forward. And I've used that experience. It's a touch point for me. I'll go back anytime I hit a, a hurdle. Mm -hmm. All right. So when we imagine, we think, okay, cool. This is great. I love this idea. And then we, we face the real world. And then all of a sudden we're like, oh, I can't, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. But Martin Luther said, everything that is done in the world is done by hope. Wow. And if we can start there, just what <laughs> is it that you hope for? Yeah. It's a catalyst to living and leading. Yeah. And I, I would start there. Wow. I think this is a good pivot point. We're talking about perseverance. You have a passion for leadership. You've written a book called Leaders Press On. Um, let's talk about that a little bit, because I think that this is a really good time to dive into that a little. Sure. Yeah. So um, I wrote this book, um, actually it started as journal entries. Uh, I was always captivated by perseverance. And I didn't know how this would all tie later in life. Right. But I remember as a kid, just reading stories of perseverance by athletes. Um, uh, it was Jim Thorpe, it was Frank Gifford, it was Jesse Owens, it was Wilma Rudolph. I remember reading, you know, when I went to the library, the librarian would actually pull books out for me on <laughs> biographies of different sports players because she wow. knew that was my only interest in books yeah. was reading about these athletes and every one of those books i didn't know it at the time but as i look back now and what intrigued me was they were all about perseverance wow and um so that started with that and i just continued and carried that on and journaled about it you know and i never knew i was going to write a book about it but later on having pursued you know chasing a dream with some inventions and other ones too i realized you know what, I, I just need to get this out. And the other thing is my dad inspired me quite a bit. And uh, there were things that he had said that I remember saying to myself, boy, after he passed, boy, I really wish that he had captured those in a book. It would have been great. <laughs> right. And then uh, it was like somebody knocked, tapped me on the soul, shoulder and said, well, why don't you write that book? Wow. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's how that book came about. Wow, that's really cool. You talk about four phases of um, perseverance and how to apply them to your business or dream. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So I mentioned earlier those four phases, the imagine, create, explore, discover, and yeah. just uh, those elements of it. And then just trying to unpack those further. I just shared a little bit about hope for the imagine phase. Right. But the other part for imagine, uh, which is really critical, right? So yeah, okay, you start with hope, but then what? Right. So the other part is really getting clarity of that vision right 
and the vision that you have and capturing it. It's very important to do that. And we could dive into that a little bit further, but I think for any business or any individual for that matter, you should definitely take time to kind of lay out a vision, a mission and a purpose. You need all three of those things and they're not all the same. And we right. can talk about that if you want. Right. But well, you, you mentioned yeah, there about finding clarity. And when you have a big idea and dream, sometimes finding clarity is the hardest thing to do. Talk a little yes. bit about clarity and what that looks like. Yeah. Um, so clarity, let's say that you have that hope or that vision, that dream, and yeah. you've captured it. Um, then what do you what do you want to do with that? Right. Yeah. So first, if you if you're going to capture that, then you need to say, really ask yourself a question. All right. What are the things that I need to do to achieve this vision? Is this truly a vision that I am aspiring that I want? Right. That, but maybe others want as well. And that's key too, right? Can you connect that vision with other people? Yeah. Right. You know, and the, the scriptures say that uh, where there's no vision, the people will perish. Right. And when you unpack that a little bit further, you realize, well, vision is really meant to be shared. Yeah. You know, so you need a team, you need at least one other person to be able to share that vision. So who else can you connect with that vision? But then what are the steps that you need to take to do it? What are the actions? What's the behavior you need to be able to accomplish the vision? Right. And that is describing your mission. Yeah. So vision is your target. Mission describes how you're going to reach your target. Yeah. Right. Now, by the way, I should mention that you can have multiple visions and that's okay. Yeah. But your mission May will probably never change once you really get it. You can fine tune it. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But your mission sort of transcends any one vision. Yeah. Because it's who you are. It's how you're. Uh, it, it describes your behavior. It describes your um, your persona. How you are going to be reflected in this world. How you operate and execute day to day. And based on that, how how you live it, live out your day, and how you live out your life that's going to allow you to accomplish that vision or visions that you have. Yeah. So, and then the third piece is purpose. So you have your vision, that's your target that describes what you want. You have your mission that describes essentially your behavior. That's how you do it. And then you have your purpose and that describes your why that's who you are. That's the essence of your intent of how you live your life and why it's important for you to be able to pursue that vision and live your mission. So those are those are three critical things for finding that clarity. So I, I would start with that. And you know, best thing too is when you start studying um, the lives of other leaders, yeah. uh, you you can start to pull out their vision, their mission, and their purpose. Uh, you can do this for Winston Churchill, Ronald Reagan, Steve Jobs. You can find it for every one of them. Those that truly found success and innovated and persevered and did something meaningful. And I think all of us can do something meaningful. They had a mission, they had a vision, they may have had several, and they had a purpose. Right. Right. And, and, and I think what you're talking about here at the larger picture is, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but so often we live the status quo and we buy into things that really aren't the driving factor behind who we are, our identity, and the purpose that we have to complete while we're here on earth. And that living that status quo, not fulfilling that mission, not finding our own dreams and vision, not finding that purpose, uh, it really stifles us and lets us live in a place of mediocrity or uh, being unfulfilled or, or just being broken and, and always having that thought of one day, which we mentioned earlier, or someday maybe I'll be able to overcome my obstacle. But the reality is, is that you just got to keep moving forward to finding that mission and vision and purpose to drive ourselves into the destiny that we have, the, the created purpose that, that we were given for our lives. Yeah, well said. You know, and I think the thing that kind of stops us are our fears, right? So when we hit every one of us, even those that I mentioned earlier, Winston Churchill, Steve Jobs, Ronald yeah. Reagan, all those, they all had fears. Yeah. We all have fears. Yeah. And when we see fear, um, yeah, it, it, it does a couple things to us. Yeah. One, it's like, ooh, um, maybe not. 
<laughs> we don't want to experience what might happen. But fear is also an element of that kind of lives in your imagination. Right. Way. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about that all the time about fear is the worst motivator. It's the, it's the worst place to live. And, and it will be one of the break, uh, biggest breakers of dreams and destiny. Yeah. But there's also elements of fear that can motivate you. Yeah. Right. So if you can find a way to leverage that fear in a, yeah. in a certain way, you know, um, you can you can have a breakthrough. Um, and can you give you an know, example of how you can leverage your fear as a launching break, uh, launching point, or a, 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 a way to break the obstacle? Well, we see um, you see this a lot. The one fear that I think will motivate people and it, and I'm, I'm not a big fan of letting fear motivate you by the way yeah. <laughs> but uh, i would say that one fear that motivates people is the fear of rejection yeah all right or disappointment um and they don't want somebody else to feel disappointed for what they they have or haven't done so that fear you know and i, I can go back and rewind the tape and and think of moments where i made a decision or i took action because i, ha I had the fear of disappointment Right. So fear can be a motivator, you know, and a lot of times fears kind of, they challenge each other, right? So yeah, the fear of disappointment versus the fear of failure um, or the fear of um, fear of the process. Yeah. That's, that's the one where <laughs> gets me the most is like, oh, look at all the things I have to do. And like, oh, yeah. this is going to be such hard work. Yeah. And then one of these other fears kind of taps me on the shoulder, like, well, just think of how you're going to feel if you don't go forward, you're going to, you know, and, and I, I try not to let those fears be my motivator, but I realize that that, that does play a part. And then I can start to leverage that. And then what I try to do, and I would encourage other people to do is, is when you feel that fear, just realize it, it, it isn't real, real yet. It's not, you know, the, just because you feel the fear, it, it's sort of warning you, which is good. Yeah. yeah. It's an early warning system, but it doesn't mean that it's going to actually happen. You're not yeah. a prophet, you know, so don't don't allow that fear to to dictate exactly what's going to happen next. But be bold. Yeah. You know, uh, people think that boldness is something that you've got to feel at the front end <laughs> and then you can go. But really, it's 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 an action. Yeah. It's a step you take. A courage is something. It's a choice. Yeah. You know, so you've got to be courageous. You know, strength comes after you take that step of courage. Right. It usually doesn't come beforehand. It right. comes after you take that step of courage. Yeah. So when you do, you know, recognize the fears, recognize them, but don't, don't necessarily listen to them, but take that step forward with courage, step of courage, and then the strength will come. You are a part of the John Maxwell team, and they have something pretty cool going on. Uh, it's called the John Maxwell Transformation Leadership Awards. Tell us a little bit about that and how people can get involved. Yeah, it's fantastic. So John Maxwell, if you're not familiar, is um, one of my mentors and yeah. one of uh, probably millions of Americans uh, and across the world is probably a mentor for them as well. He's written, I don't know how many books, maybe close to 80, maybe more. And um, he's been a, a person of influence in my life and certainly other people's lives. Right. And one of the things that he, um, what's great about him, and I get a chance to see him every couple couple times each year, and I just got back seeing him here in February. Um, what he likes to do is he loves to hear stories of impact that other people are making. That's cool. So, and to do that, I mean, he looks different, looks for different ways to to find out about that. And one of the ways is through this leadership awards. Yeah. And he realizes that there are a lot of folks out there that have much more eyes and ears than he does. Yeah. That are witnessing and observing other people who are making an impact and that are persons of influence, doing things at a time that makes a difference, wow. doing something that makes a difference. Wow. And so every year, um, and I'm part of the team that's behind this, which is cool. And I'm just honored to do that is uh, we get to um, really ask the world, really the United States and Canada, we're trying to opening this up further if we can, yeah. but we're just asking to see who is out there making an impact. And uh, and we, we go through several rounds, it's kind of cool, but uh, usually what we do is we get, you know, 
I don't know how many thousands of different entries in, and it boils down to a hundred. So we'll, we'll share a hundred top 100 candidates. And then through that process, we'll go a little bit further and explore. And we're exploring five things about a leader at the very front end. What, what are they doing as far as relationships? You know, how impactful are they with their relationships? Yeah. How impactful are they in equipping other people? Okay. Uh, what, how about their growth, their personal growth? Are they growth minded person? That's really mm -hmm. important for John. It's important for any leader to be growth minded. And then attitude, um, you know, as John says, attitude drives altitude. What, what is their attitude? What's the impact of their attitude and how are they influencing others with their attitude? Yeah. And that last piece, um, is the other elements and key elements of influence or leadership. What are they doing uh, in terms of uh, pursuit of a dream or a goal or a vision in terms of leading in that direction? Wow. So those five pieces are sort of the essence of, of what we evaluate initially. And then we go a little bit further with, uh, with each of the candidates. And we go from 100 to 30 to 10 to the final three or four and then the final one. Uh, wow. John's part of that process. It's kind of fun. It's just a great experience. And I, I recommend and encourage everybody out there to to consider that. Who's who's making an impact in your world that you uh, you want to see recognized for what they do, That uh, just to honor them. So it's a great opportunity to do that. We'll make sure to include the link in the episode notes and everything like that where you can go. And uh, Is it that you nominate or that you vote for people? You will nominate somebody. Okay. And you'll have a – yeah, so there will be a link. We'll – I'll get the link to you yeah. and uh, everybody can, can nominate somebody and then that candidate will, will get notification of it and they'll go through a, just a questionnaire. And then later, once we get to a top 100, we will post uh, the information, the bios for each of those individuals. And then you can make comments on that. Certainly we look at that, the review team and John himself, but um, it's not a voting system at all. It's, it's a, a real pure, uh, analysis and just an investigation, yeah. exploration of what they're doing as wow. a leader. So, that's very cool. It starts with that nomination. So that's, that's the key vote is just to nominate somebody. <laughs> <laughs> that's very, very, very cool. Yeah. Speaking of leadership, um, we are in interesting times to say the least. And one of the things that I hear often, and it's an area that I'm super passionate about is next generations and specifically the millennial generation and you've got a very cool podcast called leading the millennials tell us a little bit about that yeah that this was uh, uh really the brainchild of uh my co-host ken tar and okay. i love ken ken is a uh, u.s marine he he was uh active duty uh, up until maybe a year ago and then he transitioned to reserves a uh, fantastic guy. In fact, he was nominated years, a few years ago when he was serving at the Naval Academy as a Marine as uh, one of the top 10 um, yeah. leaders. I think it was in 2015 or 2014. I can't remember which year. And so that's when I got a chance to meet him and talk to him and interview him. And, and uh, we just really hit it off. And he came to me and he said, hey, I would love to do a podcast. And I'm really passionate about millennials because I am one. Yeah. And I, I don't want to and I've been leading millennials for a while and, and, and I would love to just do something with you. Would you be up for that? And I'm like, dude, I'm all over that. Let's do it. <laughs> so yeah. we, uh, we're, you know, we're, we've been doing this for about a year, maybe just a little over a year. And we started off as a kind of a weekly thing. And, and right now it's bi-monthly just because our schedules are so busy, but we love doing it. Um, and we're passionate about that next generation of leader. Yeah. The millennials. Um, and I, I'm, I love it because we're at a, I'm in a workspace where we have a lot of millennials and I love to see them uh, take ownership of their dream, of their vision and, and move forward with it. And, uh, and so I, I want to look for every way that I can, whether it's within our business or outside of it yeah. to encourage millennials. Yeah, that's good. Millennials get a bad rap and it's easy to categorize people negatively and not see their potential. I think we do it way too much in our culture, in American culture, where where we pick people apart. We're not rooting for their success, and uh, it's just bad. Can you share maybe one lie 
of the millennial generation, one promise that the millennial generation has that they need, destiny that they have, and maybe one challenge, whether it's working with them or something like that, that we need to overcome with that generation? Yeah, a great question. Um, well, first of all, I would say what the millennials are experiencing probably isn't very different than what my generation experienced. Okay. You know, because you come in when you graduate from college and you will come into a workspace, you feel like you're the the runt of the family because you're the, the new one. You're the yeah. young one. You're yeah. the person that ha- doesn't have the experience yet. And so this element of experience typically gets slapped on uh, to a millennials and any, any, any next generation or whatever generation that is, oh, they don't have the experience. Right. Well, that's a lie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You'll get experience. You're only going to get experience if you take that first step forward in going through uh, living, living out your vision. Right. Right. And pursuing what it is that you intend to do. Remember, I talked about the box that we're all (laughs) candles. Right. And that, you know, the reality is, is those candles are hardly ever used. And that's sort of like that in life too, right? Where we just limit ourselves. We're living in that status quo box and we're not really living to our capacity. Right. But our capacity can only be lived once we light that candle. Yeah. And then once we have it lit, and here's the struggle point is, okay, we step forward out of the box. We get in proximity of somebody else that can really kind of help encourage us, mentor us, light our candle. And then we want to go out and pursue it. And I've, I did this when I was younger. I see millennials do this too. They're like, okay, I'm cool. I'm, I got it. And I run <laughs> off and go. And remember we talked about the dip earlier that right. Seth Godin talked about. Well, what happens is you feel that resistance. Yeah. The, you know, that wind that a candle feels can blow it out. It's the same thing that happens to us. We wow. feel all this resistance. And then all of a sudden, boom, the candle's out. And we go back to the box, back to the status quo. Yeah. So the reality is, though, and this is this is where somebody, uh, several people actually encouraged me. I, I kind of went back to the box, and there was like a rescue mission. Mm-hmm. Some of these folks came back and said, what are you doing, man? You got so much <laughs> untapped potential. And millennials, right. you guys have untapped potential. Right. We all do. And so they came to me and said, you got untapped potential. You're back in the box. Let's go. Let's, yeah. let's get this thing going. Yeah. And so, and they, they reminded me, they said, look, a kite only flies into the wind. A plane flies directly into the wind. Right. A, a sailboat needs the wind. You need that resistance. It's going to give you the lift. The eagle yeah. soars when it's, you know, using that wind to give it lift. Yeah. And learning how to leverage that, I talked about earlier, when you explore those opportunities, which really are the challenges that you have, yeah. it's like the wind. Yeah. And there's really opportunities in those challenges and to work through that. So I would say for any millennials, if you're experiencing some challenges and you, you, know, you got your candle lit and you're like ready to go, but you're just like, whoa, that wind's too hard. Uh, just remind yourself, hey, go through that. You're actually, it's going to, it's going to light you up even further because you're going to find a way <laughs> through that and you're going to be right. able to encourage other people through that experience. Yeah, that's good. You can tell based on what you've talked about today that faith is a foundation for you. How has faith been that foundation for your business, for how you operate in, as a leader and also uh, your passions for, for dreaming and that kind of thing? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, faith for me is very important, yeah. and um, it's something where I I was very fortunate growing up. Um, my parents uh, were faith believers as well, and that kind of transcended. But I really had to make find it for myself, to be honest with you. Yeah. And uh, once I did, and I really really was able to leverage that. I talked about courage before, and there are times where I, I can go back and and uh, just identify probably a thousand different experiences where I, I didn't have the strength in, within to go do something. And I remember like the first time I had a public speaking experience, I was nervous as all, I was sweaty as <laughs> all, and it was it was not going to go good. Right. But I just relied on that faith and I just sort of 
trusted in that faith. And this is where faith is so powerful. Wow. Where I was able to just kind of let go yeah. and just give it, give it to God, yeah. you know, just put it, my trust and faith in him. And I just allowed it to happen. And it was great. I mean, it wasn't perfect. You know, I'm human. We all stumble, <laughs> but <laughs> I was able to get through it. Yeah. And that was just one experience of many. And I've been learning, every, you know, I continue to learn yeah. that when I trust with faith in the efforts and actions that I take, things will go better. Yeah. Things, things really do. And, uh, you know, I just want to encourage folks, you know, if you're a person of faith, rely on that faith. That is a key element to your perseverance. Yeah. Faith is so vital for us uh, to be able to, to get through what it, whatever challenges that you have. Yeah. And if you're facing a challenge, don't think that you're the only one. We all right. have challenges. Yeah. So so good. You've got yeah. your book. You've got the podcast. You've got uh, Simventions. You've got a lot going on. Uh, and you've got a cool resource that you're launching that you're going to share with our, our listeners here. Uh, tell us about how people can find, connect, and learn from what you got going on. Yeah, um, definitely want to connect with uh, with everybody. So appreciate uh, being on this podcast. It's awesome. Best way to get in touch with me uh, is you can follow me on Twitter uh, at Paul Gustafson. Just search for that. Um, or connect with me at my uh, my homepage. Just go to leaderspresson.com. And I've got a free tool that I have just for the Jumble Think listeners out there. If you go to uh, leaderspresson.com slash jumblethink. Uh, I've got some thoughts on innovation, some key things that mm -hmm. uh, you, that I've got special just for this group. I want to wanted to launch with a fresh new resource for this group here on uh, on being innovative and staying innovative. So I think you guys will really enjoy that. So connect with me on that, and uh, I'm on all the different social media platforms too. If you want to find me on Instagram as well and Facebook and things like that, but uh, would love to connect with you guys. Very cool. Thanks for offering that for our listeners. Really appreciate it. Yeah, glad to. We'll be right back with rapid fire questions. You have big ideas and dreams, but you don't know where to start. You're overwhelmed. You're filled with fear. You're anxious. You're hitting obstacles and you want some help. Well, JumbleThink is here to help you. You can find some amazing resources, including books we recommend and our free downloads at JumbleThink.com. You can also learn more about our services to help you take that idea, that dream, and make it a reality. So swing on over to jumblethink.com and let's start the journey of making your dream become real. Now let's jump back into rapid fire questions with Paul Gustafson. We're back for rapid fire questions. Paul, you ready for some rapid fire questions? Uh, I think so, I'm ready, yeah. What is one tip you'd give someone with a big idea or dream and they don't know where to start? Let's see, the one tip I would give someone with a big idea or dream is to write it down. You've okay. got to capture it. Yeah. You, dreams don't not captured rarely come true. Right. So any uncaptured dream. And then I would say, really uh, use that, what you capture as a means to cast your vision. Oh. So I'm kind of giving two tips yeah. here, right? What are you going to do with that? Yeah. Well, use that to cast your vision and make sure you also define a mission to go with it. So good. What is one change you would like to see in the world? Uh, less traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I would love to see less traffic, especially here. Uh, but <laughs> I would say, um, in all honesty, I mean, that's, that would be cool, but less bullying. Mm -hmm. I'm working with youth. Another thing that I do with the John Maxwell hat is uh, we, we go into some of the schools and we, we have a program called Youth Max. And uh, we're connecting with some middle, middle school kids. And these kids are from broken homes, wow. essentially. Wow. And uh, we just had a, you know, I've been doing this for a few years and uh, we just had a session a couple of days ago and we asked the kids, how many of you have ever been bullied? In the whole room, every single hand went up. Wow. Every one of them. Wow. And we really kind of unraveled that a little bit further. And um, it's just so prevalent in our society. You know, you, you saw what happened with the shootings earlier this year and, it's, it's, you know, and it happens in different forms, whether it's through social media or face to face in the classroom, in the hallways, it, it just happens. So I would, one thing I could change if I could change right now would be less bullying. What do you want your legacy to be? 
That's a great question. <laughs> you know, I think of my dad when I think of legacy, right? So I think of who he was, and it's probably similar to what he left behind. So I want to pass on that legacy. In fact, I can't remember the quote, but one of the greatest quotes from Billy Graham, who just passed away recently, yeah. is on, on legacy, that the greatest legacy that we can pass on to our children isn't money or materials. It's just um, the love and you know, the love that we can give them that they can pass on to others. So I would want my legacy to be similar to that. I would I'd want my legacy to be that I helped others in some small way to achieve their goal mm. in their dreams, that I encourage them to persevere. Where do you find inspiration? You know, that's a great question too. I find inspiration a lot of different sources. Okay. One is stories. Oh, yeah. I find a lot of inspiration in stories. Yeah. The stories of those around me, um, it's kind of cool when I when we can pull something out of, of that, and uh, that inspires me. The stories of those that have innovated and persevered, you know, I love stories of innovators. I think they're so mm. powerful. I talked earlier about when I was a kid, I was, I was inspired by athletes, you know, reading about them. Uh, I, I find inspiration <laughs> in a good movie, e even if it's a cartoon movie. Yeah. Um, like uh, Taming Your Dragon or whatever, um, yeah. a Pixar movie, I can find inspiration in a good story. Yeah. And I'm learning, and this is kind of cool, I'm finding that I can even be inspired by uh, my own stories of the challenges that I've gone through. Not, not that I claim them for my own, but I realize that through faith and through perseverance, it's taught me something. And so I find inspiration in what I've experienced. That's so, so the good. best experience. Yeah, the best experience is evaluated experience. Yeah. And that can be inspiring. What is one book you think every dreamer and entrepreneur should read and why? One book, just one? Oh, my goodness. This is so tough. There's so many to choose from, Michael. I think, though, maybe one book, if, if people don't have a lot of time to read, is Poke the Box by Seth Godin. Yeah. I, I would say read that one. Uh, the reason I think that book really encourages you to step out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it's such a short book. It's a quick read. It's a little different than most books, but I think it'll be powerful. I love the question that he gives you. It challenges us with this fantastic question. Mm. And the question is this, when is the last time you did something for the first time? Wow. I just love that question because wow. it allows us to think like, you know, when we were kids, we used, we could answer that easily. Mm -hmm. But as we get older, it's harder to answer that question. Yeah. When's the last time I did something for the first time? So good. You know, and so keep keep yourself fresh. Do something new. What is one tool that is significant for the success of your business? One tool for the success of our business. There's a lot of, you know, tools are cool. Uh, yeah. David Allen wrote a great book on uh, really just management of your time and things of that sort. And he had a card deck that came out a few years ago. And, and one of the first cards I pulled out was uh, a card that said systems and tricks okay and on, and on the back of it it says something like you know you, you should make sure that you have the right systems and tricks to help manage your um your time your schedule uh the priorities that are important to you yeah. if something of that sort and uh and i took that to heart i have that card on my desk at mm. work i have two mm -hmm. of those cards i've got another one here at home um and I use that card. And in fact, I haven't even really looked at all the other cards. I have looked at them, but I don't really pull those out. I just keep going back to the system and wow. trick tool. Yeah. And so the one tool that I use is a scrum board yeah. personally. Yeah. All right. And I use that religiously. Okay. Um, so I start the day. It's got four columns, not three. Yeah. And one column is just the doing column. Yeah. And that's where I capture everything that has to be done. Yeah. It's just sort of like. You know, and it, it frees my mind up so I don't have to re always remember what it is that has to be done. Yeah. But I don't put, that's not what I do yeah. <laughs> right away. It's just there. It's my backlog. Yeah. And I, yeah, so I go to my second column, mm -hmm. my doing column, yep. and I put no more than three items in there. Yeah. And that's what I work. Yeah. And I try to get those done. And then I, then I write them. I put it all on a whiteboard, by the way. I don't use stickies. A lot of people use stickies. Yeah. But uh, then I write it down in a in my third column, which is called the done column. And yeah. that's cool because then I can see, you know, it's sort of inspiring <laughs> to see what I've been able to accomplish. Yeah. And that fourth column, I just have, it just says my day. Yeah. Right. So what's ahead? What are all the things that I have to do that day? And what's cool is I put this board out not only for myself to see, but anybody else that comes into my office. Because when they see it, they, they can see what I'm working on. 
and and I love for them to come by and visit. By the way, yeah. so it's 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 important that uh, there's connection. Yeah. But uh, the, at least they can see what's going on, and uh, they're aware of what is on my doing column, um, with what I'm doing right now, and then also my schedule. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. It's a really cool tool. I mean, we used it uh, in our web development company quite a bit because uh, Scrum is just a philosophy that's used a lot there. And if you don't know about it as a listener, you should go do, just look it up on Wikipedia and start learning about it. It's a very cool way to process uh, what can be overwhelming in life uh, and work and really come up with an action plan. It's very cool. Yeah, it's powerful. What is one habit you find helpful in your life as an entrepreneur? Hmm. Well, other than my scrum board, another helpful habit, I think, is is to read. Yeah. Um, I try to read at least one book a month, Michael, okay. at least one. Yeah. And I'm an Audible fan, by the way. So if you want a cool system that's out there, a technology innovation, it's, it's Audible, especially if you've got an iPhone or an Android phone. Yeah. But so I try to read at least one book a month. But go beyond just reading the book myself. It's not just about release, listening or reading the book. It's about masterminding that book with other people. That's where the real power of of the message that's in that book comes out is when I can dialogue it with other people. How do you start and finish your day? I've got this great little book that Ken Tarr, the other guy that podcasts with me, he gave me, and it's the most powerful tool that I've gotten in the last couple of years. It's called the Five Minute Journal. Okay. So I start the day with. Um, Three basic questions. Okay. The first one is what I'm grateful for, and then I, I put three responses down, and then what would make today great. That's uh, and I put three answers down for that, and then a daily affirmation for myself. I am, and then I fill in the blank, and then at the end of the day, uh, I go back to that five minute journal. So that first part only takes three minutes. The second part at the end of the day is two minutes. And I just review the day and I put three amazing things that happened that day. And then how I could have made the day even better. Just one thought that might come through. And that kind of lines me up for the next day. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty awesome. That's very cool. I hadn't heard of that before. I love it. If you weren't doing what you're doing today, what would you be doing? That's a tough question. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of balls in the air. Right. Um I'm doing a lot of different stuff and I love it all. And I, you know, it's, it's important for you to, for me to know when to say no and, <laughs> but yes, when to say yes. Yeah. So, you know, I do enjoy speaking. I'd probably be speaking more. Okay. Um, if I wasn't doing all that I'm doing, but I, I'm loving what I'm doing. So it's hard to say, <laughs> but I, maybe I'd be skiing or uh, kayaking or uh, snorkeling or something like that if, if I was on vacation, but, but uh, yeah, I enjoy what I do. Our final rapid fire question and my favorite is what is one dream you're still wanting to fulfill in your own life? Ooh, uh, that's a good one. <laughs> I've got a lot of dreams. Remember I said that you can have more than one vision, which is cool. And as long as those, right. your different vision still aligns with your mission and your purpose, that's good. And uh, one area we haven't really dabbled into is um, what I'm, <laughs> one of the other things I'm doing is I play in the world of, a little bit in the world of virtual reality and augmented reality. And, um, okay. and I'm really fascinated. I've been involved in the simulation community for a while. And I was walking through um, a couple different events and I noticed with VR, if everybody's familiar with it, right? So you have this visor and, yeah. you, you know, and they call it visor in the movie Ready Player One that's, that's out now at this point of the podcast, which I hope right. it, the movie's as good as the book. Right. That's a different discussion. But um, <laughs> but what I experienced there, and that, that book, by the way, was transforming for me. It allowed me to realize there was a need and it created mm -hmm. sort of a dream. So what I recognized when I'm walking through the Augmented World Expo last year in Santa Clara, California, or the uh, Industry Service Training Conference in Florida in December, was that when people had those VR glasses on, they were in that space, but everybody else was just kind of watching them. Yeah. And it reminded me of driving by a construction zone. Yeah. You know, where there's <laughs> where there's one guy working <laughs> yeah. and five guys watching. Yeah. You know, they're they're all watching. There's only one guy working. Yeah. And that was just like, wow, there's something lost here, you know, and 
this is actually true with AR too. So the area that I would love to explore is this idea of experiential interoperability, okay. where we can we can allow this technology that we use not to, you remember how I talked about innovation should connect people. Yeah, it shouldn't disconnect. And so there's this disconnect that actually we see this great technology, but it's creating a little bit of a disconnection. And I think the answer to that is, is experiential interoperability. So I'm exploring how we can better interface the experiences that people have so that we can share those experiences. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Before we wrap up today's episode, what is one last thought you want to leave our listeners with? Yeah, I appreciate being on on this call. I would just encourage you, um, if you're in the middle of a challenge or a struggle and you're having to persevere, you know, life leadership really is about perseverance. And um, I share a story in the book, Leaders Press On. It's the the very last story where, um, but it's a story that has transcended many, many times where I've experienced this. But specifically that story was I was on a drive to catch an airplane ride and I almost missed my flight and I almost gave up and I knew that I was, it was going to be, sh may not make the runway, if you will. <laughs> and, but um, I, I went through it. I just kind of put my faith out there and said, I'm going to give it a shot. I won't know until I try. Yeah. And I made it on that plane. It was a miracle, to be honest with you. Yeah. And I wrote down this thought as soon as I sat in my chair and, and I want to share it with everybody because it's so powerful. And the thought was this. When leaders press on, despite the odds, the impossible can happen. So good. So good. Paul, thanks for taking time out, being on this podcast, and, and giving us some amazing wisdom and insights into your world, but also to the world of leadership, into the world of, of uh, millennials and innovation, and so much more. I really appreciate it. Great. Thank you, Michael. It's been awesome. I love your podcast. And, uh, Look forward to hearing all the uh, other future podcasts that you guys are going to be putting out. Once again, we want to thank today's guest, Paul Gustafson, for taking time out to share his story and insight into so many amazing topics. Make sure to check out the episode notes for links on how you can connect up with Paul Gustafson and also how you can find that free tool and how you can find Paul on social media. On Thursday's episode, our guest is Carrie Burgett. Make sure to check out that episode. It's super fun, and I think you're going to really enjoy it. As always, we encourage you to swing on over to jumblethink.com. You can find links to where you can listen to the podcast. You can also find links to our social media channels and some great resources for you. While you're at jumblethink.com, drop us a note. We'd love to hear from you. As we wrap up today's episode, I want to leave you with this one last thought. We believe you were created for purpose and destiny. The world needs amazing people who are doing incredible things. Whether it's a small dream, whether it's a big dream, whether your idea is to change cultures or just your family, the world needs you today to live in that purpose and destiny. So do something. One thing, move a little bit closer to making that dream and idea a reality. I know it can be overwhelming and filled with fear, but it's going to be worth it. So get out there, do something, and make that dream and idea a reality. Thanks again for tuning in to the Jumble Think Podcast. It's been awesome and a privilege to have you along for the journey. Now let's get out there and change the world around us. Les mères de famille, les enfants, peuvent également prendre un moment revitalisant dans quelques mois. Lorsque vous aurez bien saisi la technique et que vous serez maître de votre corps, vous pourrez vous décontracter même en travaillant.